Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math questions out of this book here the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 220. The very first problem on page 220. Page 220. As I explained to you on the first day when, when I started this project, I made a pledge that I'm going to do every single problem out of this book. So that's what we have to do, regardless of how ridiculously simple it may be, as I put it on the first day. And that is what's going on here. The question simply is, which of the following statements are true? Number 8, it says, which of the following statements are true? Which of the following statesmen are true? Let's look at A. We're going to go very fast here. Negative 5, they tell us is less than 3.1. Of course, negative 5 is less than 1. Uh, a, a, a negative 5 is less than 3, rather. That is true. B. The square root of 14, the square root of 16, rather. And how much is square root of 16? The square root of 16 is 4, which is also true. C tells us that 7 divided by 0 equals 0. Now that's the tricky one. 7 divided by 0 equals 0. That is not true. That is not true. Any number, any number, doesn't matter what number it is, divided by 0 is undefined. How do you spell undefined? Un defined any number any number n divided by 0 equals infinity it's undefined this is true no, this is not true 7 divided by 0 it does not equal 0 it is undefined it is 7 divided by 0 equals infinity let's, that was c let's do d and e on the top D says 0 is less than absolute value of negative 1 over 7. What is this? Is this, this part here? Of, of course, you know it. It's read as absolute value. I'm going to stop doing this thing. I'm, not, I'm going to stop writing things I don't know how to spell. Absolute value simply means that you ignore the negative sign. So if you ignore the negative sign, it becomes positive. So what this actually says is that 0, what it actually says is that 0 is less than 1 7. 0 is less than 1 7, which of course is true. D is true. Let's look at E. Again, one more time. Any number divided by 0 is undefined. Let's look at E. E says 0.3 is less than one third. Of course, because one third equals 0.33. Therefore, 0.3 is less than one third. Or if you like, 0.3 is same as 3 tenth. And 3 tenth is less than one third. 3 tenth is one, less than one third. And how do we know that? I'm going to show you quickly how you know. Of course, we do know, but in case you didn't know, how do you know that 3 tenths is less than 1 third? This is what you do. You make the denominator the same. You have a common denominator. What's the common denominator of 10 and 3? It is 30. So how do I make this 30? By multiplying the top and the bottom by 3. How do I make this into 30? By multiplying the top and the bottom by 10. So now, what we end up here is that 3 times 3 is 9 and 1 times 10 is 10. The fact that it is 10 over 30 and this is 9 over 30 is irrelevant because they both have the same denominator. It doesn't matter. You can clearly see, you can clearly see 9 is less than 10. This 0.3 is less than 0.33. That is true. Let's look at F. F. 
F says negative 1 raised to 87 equals negative 1. Well, a negative number, a negative number raised to an odd power remains negative. Except in this case we have 1, so no matter how many times we multiply 1 by itself, it's going to just be 1. 1 times 1, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. It is just 1. Question is, is it a positive 1 or is it a negative 1? It's a negative 1. This quantity is a negative 1 because a negative number, any negative number, raised to an odd power remains negative. For example, if you have negative 2 raised to an odd power, which is 3 here, which is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 and positive 4 times negative 2 is going to give us negative 8. It remains negative. This is a negative 1. Negative 1 is same is of course is equal to negative 1. It's true. Let's look at G. G says square root of negative 3 squared is less than 3. Well, how much is negative 3 squared? Negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 3, negative 3 squared is same as negative 3 times negative 3, which is a positive 9. Which is a positive 9. So here we have square root of, this quantity here, is a square root of positive 9. And the square root of 9 equals 3. So what this is saying here is that, what this is saying is that 3 is less than 3, which of course is boulder dash. 3 is not less than 3, not the last time I checked. Not the 3 I ran into. I don't know about your 3. Let's look at H. Twenty one over twenty eight we are told is equal to three quarter. So what can we divide 21 and 20, 28 by? Do you find any common factor? The common of, common factor, of course, is 7. 21 divided by 21 divided by 7 is 3, and 28 divided by 7 is 4. So 3 quarter does equal 3 quarter. It is true. H. Let's look at I. I says negative value of negative 23 is equal to 23. Let's see what this means. Absolute value of negative 23, absolute value of negative 23 means positive 23. That's what absolute value means. Absolute value means you ignore the negative sign. So this quantity here is positive 23. This quantity here that you see here, this quantity under the absolute sign is a positive 23. A positive 23 and then we have a negative in front. A negative times a positive 23 is going to give us a negative 23. We are told that this negative 23 we are told equals a positive 23 which of course is nonsense. A negative 23 cannot equal positive 23. That was I. Let's look at J. J says 1 over 2 is greater than 1 over 17 which of course is true. One half is greater than one seventeenth because seventeen is a much larger denominator. And again, if you wanted to play the same trick that I showed you before, how do we make a common denominator? By multiplying this side by seventeen and over seventeen and multiplying this side by two over two. And you will immediately see that now we have a common denominator of thirty-four. And on the top we have seventeen over thirty-four and here we have two over thirty-four. And you can immediately see that 17 over 34 is greater than 2 over 34 because the denominator is the same. J is true. Of course, I didn't have to do all of that. It's very obvious that 117 is going to be far less than 1 half. It's not even 1 quarter. It's not even 1 eighth. It's not even 1 sixteenth. It's 1 seventeenth for crying out loud. K. K is this. 59 to the third times 59 to the second power equals 59 to the sixth. Is that how they write it? K. Yes. 
Well, when the bases are the same, these are called bases, 59 is the same as this 59. When bases are the same, we add the exponents. Because, why? Because, why? Because 59 cubed is same as 59 times 59 times 59. So that's the first part, and this is 59 squared, which is 59 times 59. So how many 59s are being multiplied by itself? 5 59s. This is 59 times 59 raised to a fifth power, which does not equal 59 raised to a sixth power. It does not equal. This is false. That was K. Let's look at the very last one, L. L says, negative of root 25 is less than negative 4. Well, this negative is outside. This does not play a part in taking the square root of it. Square root of 25 is 5. And negative 5 is in fact less than negative 4. So that statement is true. That statement is true. And that was it. That's the end of it. We're just going to keep on going, little by little, and we'll get to our destination one day, I promise you. Which is to get to the very last two exams that they give you, and finish those two exams, and that'll be the end of the book. We will get there, I tell you. I will see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.